Hi, I'm David Lee Simmons, entertainment reporter for NOLA.com and the Times-Picayune. We've been following New Orleans' increasingly popular burlesque scene over the course of 2015, and two of its most towering figures will appear together on Friday, May 22nd, at the Big Gateau Show as part of New Orleans' wine and food experience. Bella Blue and Trixie Minx are both familiar to people for their work in this scene. Bella with such productions as the Blue Book Cabaret, currently held at the Bourbon Pub and Parade, as well as the Dirty Dime Peep Show, among others. Trixie Minx, known for her own productions, which include the monthly Florida Tees show at One-Eyed Jack's, as well as the weekly burlesque ballroom at Irvin Mayfield's Jazz Playhouse and the Creole Sweet Tees show at the Burgundy Bar inside the Saint Hotel. So welcome to the, the both of you. Uh, we basically have this kind of after party that's going to be going on as uh, after the Friday night grand tasting where folks are going to be able to kind of choose their favorite treats on Friday. So I was wondering, uh, Trixie, what brought you and Bella together for this Friday event, which is basically a pastry competition, correct? And it's going to feature celebrity judges as part of Nalfi. Is that right? Um, yeah, it's actually really exciting. This is our fourth year doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it started with Tarek, uh, who runs Sucre, but he also has Salon by Sucre now. Mm -hmm. And um, Bella is a personal friend of mm -hmm. his, and we met a long time ago through a very bizarre, wonderful night at House of Blues. And like, it's one of these things that we all sort of grew up together, and we're like, oh, let's do something awesome. and. Yeah he really wanted to combine burlesque with this idea of like sort of desserts and cake and we were both game for it too. Yeah, yeah. And so what do we see? What's, what's going to happen with you guys out there? What, what, what kind of performances do you do together, separately? It's solos. So it features mm -hmm. four other, it features four total artists, uh, burlesque artists all together and we are teamed up with a team of pastry chefs and ahead of time what happens is they receive photos of us and our costume concepts and things like that and they have to build they have a whole list of of things that they have to build but mm -hmm. the center of that being a cake uh, that is inspired by our character and this year's theme is elements and so we are for elements and okay. yeah yeah it's really exciting it's really actually. fun yeah it's gonna be really good I think this year so far of the four years is probably the most exciting. And it sells out, right? Pretty much every year? It sells it's out. Yeah, I mean, it's time. lots of uh, champagne and mm. chocolate. And cake. And, and cake. burlesque. And <laughs> it's What's really, really fun. And Perfect. the way that they, they decorate the room and the lighting and the music and like everything just kind of really comes together. Yeah. And we are each posted at a different spot in the room. And so everybody like circulates through and they try everything and they take pictures with us and can actually get some like one-on-one -on -one time you know with them it's really great well one of the things I thought was so great about this is it gives us a chance to talk to to you two who are not just two of the most popular performers in town but you really are drivers of the scene who have evolved from just stage performers which is not to belittle that but you have become producers you are impresarios you're business women and so you've taken your performance background and really turned it into careers in burlesque as business women. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, Trixie, start with you. You you got your start uh, in other burlesque troops. Uh, you were with Bust Out Burlesque and very quickly kind of evolved into your own show. How important was it for you to kind of carve your own particular niche in the scene, not just as a performer, but as a producer? Yeah, I sort of fell into production out of necessity. Um, when I started doing burlesque, it was 10 years ago, and there were two big shows in town. There was Best Out Burlesque and The Storyville Starlets. And both of them were great shows, but I wasn't, it wasn't the right fit for me. I wanted, I come from a ballet background and I, I love elaborate, I love group routines, I love collaborations, and I wanted something big and more than just a burlesque dancer on stage and then off. And um, I was actually at a point where I was gonna quit because I was like, oh, I tried it, it wasn't the right fit. and. Um, it was actually through a lot of friends that were super supportive that said, why don't you just try your own thing? Mm -hmm. And that's how it started. And um, the other productions that I run, and uh, I run currently three in town, and I, I do another one that's part of a cruise ship show. Mm -hmm. And they all sort of came out of people seeing this one show, and Fleur de T specifically, and being like, oh my gosh, can you do this or this? And that's how I was able to tweak it. And it was, it's wonderful because as a performer, you have complete control of yourself on stage, or at least I think in burlesque you do. Mm -hmm. um, you, a lot of times you have certain constraints like as far as costuming or like themes, but like you can do whatever you wanna do, but as a producer you can go beyond that and you can actually 
bring in people you want to work with and like really make sure that the stage is looking the way you want, the sound, the music, the people you work with. So it's nice to be able to paint a much bigger picture than just as a performer. Well, and one of the things that strikes me about both of you, and, and Bella, I want to take this to you, is it also gives you a chance to provide a point of view, and that's another way of saying a vision. You started around 2007? I started in 2007, and I started with Florida Tees. And then you grew out of that, and now we have something as edgy as the Dirty Dime Peep Show, but also you are Bella Blue Entertainment, yeah. there's the cabaret. How important was it for you to carve out your own niche, and, and it, it, it feels like you have something to say with burlesque? And I do. Um, it was really important because I feel that to be able to contribute to the scene, it's not about just it's not about just putting on these shows and and making a living, and like all of that, of course, is like super important. But it's about contributing for me, contributing to the city. What is my contribution? We have a very survival mentality in this city you know we're still here we survived multiple hurricanes sometimes a siege mentality you know what i mean <laughs> what is my contribution what can i bring to the table to keep this city afloat and to keep things going and wanting people to come back my contribution is through is through my performance and and putting shows together that that fulfill a need for people who want to see see what we do you know and see what I do and what I bring to the table also to build on that it's um, it's very funny because for me I had moved to the city in 2001 but it wasn't until after Katrina that what you're talking about this contribution I so badly wanted to be a part of this say like it it was so clear at that point that this was home this is hmm. where I wanted to be this is where I belong and it really is that idea of like what can you give what can you do and and um, not necessarily like, you know, that it is changing the world, but it's this idea of like, I want to be an active part of New Orleans history and culture. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of what makes a city great. Well, Trixie Minx, uh, Bella Blue, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about your work around town and this Friday at the Big Gateau Show, uh, which starts at nine o'clock at the Grand Ballroom at the Royal Sinesta Hotel, 300 Bourbon Street. For more information, you can visit www.nowfe.com. For NOLA.com and the Times-Picayune, I'm David Lee Simmons.